Hello, welcome to this software defined access talk. This talk and demo covers how segmentation is managed between fabrics utilizing an IP transit. My name is Jonathan Eaves and I'm a technical marketing engineer at Cisco. Software defined access or SDA utilizes Cisco DNA Center for orchestration and Assurance Engine for analytics and Identity Services Engine or ICE for security policy management. This demo covers two fabric sites. One on the left, Fabric 1, has a 3850 fabric edge and a CAT 9300 border. Fabric 2 on the right comprises of a CAT 9300 fabric edge and an ISR 4431 border. The fabrics are interconnected with an IP transit. An IP transit may be required if an SD-WAN or SDA transit is unsuitable for any reason. With an IP transit, the objective is to ensure the security group classification information is propagated from fabric to fabric to ensure end-to-end -end policy application and operation. And with an IP transit, that is um, achieved using SXP from ICE. So when a device connects to uh, Fabric 1, AAA with ICE leads to that device being provisioned into the Building Management VN and assigned to the HVAC SGT, as an example. Additionally, ICE has been set up to send that dynamic IP to SGT mapping to Fabric 2's border via SXP. This is used to reclassify traffic being received from Fabric 1. Similarly, when an HVAC system connects to Fabric 2, as an example, ICE assigns the same VN and SGT and sends that mapping to Fabric 1 border via SXP. Now, when traffic flows from Fabric 1 towards Fabric 2, the border does not insert the scalable group tag, or SGT, in the packets when sent across the IP transit. When the Fabric 2 border receives the IP packets from Fabric 1, it uses the learnt SXP information to reclassify those packets into the HVAC SGT and forwards the packets onto the Fabric 2 edge. Fabric 2 edge is where any defined enforcement occurs. So let's move on to show Cisco DNA Center. If we select the design menu, we can show the network hierarchy. And under the Reading location, I have two sites. So I've just called them ground floor and floor one. That's where my equipment is in the lab. But ground floor is fabric one in the diagram, and floor one is, is fabric two. The network settings here is where items like DHCP, DNS, and AAA server settings are assigned. You can see the settings here for the ICE integration. This is also where you define the IP pools to be used. You define them at the top of the hierarchy, and, this, and then you assign them in the appropriate fabric site. So down under Reading, um, the Fabric 1 here, I've assigned the 1041 subnet. And on the Fabric 2, I've assigned the 1051 subnet. So moving on to the provision menu, we can see the global list of devices in the network. And we can sort on the site column here to see what I've got per site. So on the ground floor, remember, remember this is Fabric 1. I've got my 3850 edge and the Cat 9K border. And on Fabric 2 here, I've got a Cat 9K edge and an ISR border. So clicking on the Fabric tab shows we've got four fabrics. Now I'm not using the default LAN fabric. I've added two more. So Reading Fabric is my Fabric 1 and the Reading Floor 1 is, the, is my Fabric 2. Um, if I click on my Fabric 1, we can see the here's the 3850 edge and the CAT 9K border. And host onboarding is where we've assigned the Building Management VN and also assigned the host pool stroke VLAN for, um, for Fabric 1 using the 1041 subnet. So going back to the fabric, we look at um, Fabric 2 here. We can see that there's a CAT 9K edge and the ISR border. And looking at host onboarding, we can see the building management VN is assigned along with a host pool stroke VN or VLAN 
for um, Fabric 2 using the 1051 subnet. Then going back to the fabric, the last fabric we've got added here is the transit. If I select the transit, you can see this is purely added as an IP based transit using BGP. Moving on to policy orchestration, I have six virtual networks in the system. The one we are particularly interested in for this demo is the building management VN and you can see the HVAC SGT has been assigned to this VN. As far as policy orchestration goes, this is done under group based access control and group based access control policies and you can see no policies have been added yet. So jumping over to the clients that are connected, the left one here is connected to Fabric 1. It's already been connected and authorized onto the network. So if we have a look at the IP address, it's 1041113. The right one is connected to Fabric 2. And again, it's already connected. So if we look at the IP, it's 1051100. And if we ping from the device in Fabric 1, over to the device in Fabric 2, you can see the pings are successful. So going back to the diagram, the ping from left here to right is being successful and it's passed over this IP transit. So let's have a look to see what this means to the actual access switches. So this is the 3850 in Fabric 1. Let's have a look at the authenticated session. We can see the IP address there. We can see it's assigned into the into the VLAN, and it's assigned SGT18, which is HVAC. Now let's have a look at the Fabric 2 edge. So this is the Cat9K in Fabric 2. This is the IP address assigned, 10.51.100. It's in a VLAN that's assigned by ICE and also assigned SGT18. So that is also assigned the SGT HVAC. Back to the diagram. We need to send Fabric 1's mappings here to the Fabric 2 border via SXP. And this is needed to reclassify uh, the traffic flowing over from Fabric 1. So let's check on ICE how we've set up the SXP mechanism. So let's go over to ICE. This is Identity Services Engine. And we navigate to the Work Center and under this menu select SXP. And these are the connections going down to my borders. So I have a connection going down to my Fabric 2 border. And what I'm doing is I'm sending particular mappings to that border and these are the mappings that I'm getting from Fabric 1. I've put them in a particular domain. Equally I have a connection going down to the Fabric 1 border and all I'm doing is sending mappings from Fabric 2 over to that border. And if we have a look at the all SXP mappings we can see these are the mappings which are dynamically learnt from the device authenticating with ICE and you can see the 10.4.1.1.1.3 is being sent to Fabric 2. So this 10.4.1.3, if you remember, is in Fabric 1. We're sending that mapping to Fabric 2. And the device authenticated into Fabric 2 with 10.5.1 is sent to the Fabric 1 border. And these mappings are done within these filters. If I click on the filters, you can see all I've done is added a filter for the 10.4.1 subnet in Fabric 1. I'm sending that over to Fabric 2. So this is how we scale using SXP domains in ICE. So if ICE is configured to send dynamic mappings from Fabric 1 to Fabric 2 border, then let's check the mappings in that ISR 4431 border in Fabric 2. So let's have a look at this ISR. So this is the border in Fabric 2. So let's first have a look at the SXP connections. Show CTS SXP connections. Now SXP is VRF aware, so we have to put the VRF in here, which is building management. So this is the SXP connection to ICE, this is the ICE IP and the connection is on or up and operational. 
So now let's have a look at the mappings. We should have learned some mappings from ICE. So if we do show CTS role based SDT map again in the VRF, we can see that we have learned the mapping from Fabric 1 over into this border, which is the border for Fabric 2. And it's the IP to SDT mapping that we've learned. So it's the IP to the HVAC SGT. So now let's add a add a policy in Cisco DNA Center. So here we've got no policies yet, so let's add a policy. And let's give it a, a reasonable name. So what we're going to do is add a policy to deny traffic between all members of the HVAC group, so from HVAC to HVAC. So let's call it HVAC to HVAC, make it meaningful. And we're going to say from source SGT HVAC to destination HGT HVAC and we'll just do a pure deny OK and we'll save it. Now this will be saved into Identity Services Engine but it won't push it just yet because there's an option to deploy within Cisco DNA Center which is this deploy function. So if we go over to the client you can see that this is still pinging so if we go back to Cisco DNA Center and hit the deploy this will request ICE to send a COA to the network devices and deploy the policy. And you can see there. So the IP um, ping is is being denied now from Fabric 1 to Fabric 2 due to a policy we've just deployed. So let's let's see where it is actually being enforced. So if we go back to the switches, let's go down to the edge device in Fabric 2 and let's have a look to see if the policy is on this switch. So show CTS role based permissions and you can see this new policy has been dynamically deployed from HVAC to HVAC it's deny. And also to see that we're enforcing here we can do a show CTS role based counters and we can see from 18 to 18 we're getting hardware denies. If I refresh that, it's going up. So back to the diagram, this is where we're enforcing at, um, at egress on this 9300 Fabric Edge. So as a summary then, we've seen a device authenticating into Fabric 1 on the left and the dynamic IP to HTT mapping sent to Fabric 2 border via SXP. When traffic flows from Fabric 1 to Fabric 2, the Fabric 2 border receives the IP from the source, reclassifies into the source group utilizing the SXP information and sends the source SGT within the VXLAN packets to Fabric 2 Edge. It's Fabric 2 Edge that enforces the traffic in the Fabric 1 to Fabric 2 direction. Similarly, Fabric 1 Edge would enforce traffic in the Fabric 2 to Fabric 1 Edge direction. So that concludes the tech talk and demonstration. Thanks very much for watching.